So hopefully you've now installed Violin and you're ready to start with basic validation. So we're going to look at calling the validate method on our new Violin instance, passing in some data and then seeing what data we get out of this in terms of errors and how we can use different methods to check if our validation passed or failed. So the first thing we want to do is use the validate method and this accepts one array. And in here, we're going to give the name of each of our pieces of data. So this could be a username, an email, a password, anything. So let's start out with a basic example. Let's say a user was registering on your website. They obviously need to provide something like a username. And here what we do is we pass another array. So we have this as our array key, and then we have this as our array value, which is another array. Now the first element of this array is the data that you want to validate. So this could come from your post or get super global, but for now I'm just going to type this data in uh, just as it is so we can see how this works. So the second element of this array is the list of rules that you want to apply to this value. So in this case, um, the list of rules are within our rules folder within the source code. You can see them over on the GitHub page as well. We have a list of rules just listed down here. But what we're going to do is just type these out. I'm going to say that I want the username to be required. I want this to be a minimum of three. So no one registers a user name with less than three characters. And this is inclusive as well. So they'll be able to register with three characters. And I'm going to say I want this to be a maximum of 30 or let's say 20 for this. So now all you do is you repeat this for every other field that you want to include. So for example, an email address, we want to provide an email address. So I'm going to say billy at codecourse.com. And for the second, we're going to list our rules. And you've probably already noticed that the rules are listed by a pipe symbol. So in this case, I'm going to say that I want the email address to be required and I want it to be an email that will check that it's a valid email format. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to choose a password or uh, define the password. So let's just say cats for the password. And we want this to be required, obviously. Now we can say that we want this to be, say, a minimum of something, uh, but we already know how to use them rules. So for now, let's just keep this as required. And let's say we had a password confirmation. This is slightly different because uh, what you actually want to do here is detect that if your part that your password com confirmation is the same as your original password. So let's give the value cats for this. And let's also say we want this to be required. Uh, but what we're going to say is use the matches rule to uh, tell violin that we want this to match the password here. So basically, this has to match password which exists here. So these two need to match. It's as simple as that to get going with. So what we need to do now is once you've passed all your data in and you would pass this in obviously in this first uh, array uh, element, we then can check if the validation passes or fails. So we can use an if statement to do this. And all we do is we say v passes or we can use v fails. So what we'll do is we'll say if v passes, let's go ahead and just echo out passed. Now, otherwise, we'll do a var dump on the errors. So we have this errors method, which will return us a message bag with all of the errors. And we have helpers here. So we can say things like all first on a specific field. But we'll be looking at those in detail uh, a bit later in the series. So here then let's just recap we are validating a username email password and password confirm we've looked at some rules already you can go ahead and reference them yourself um, this should pass because everything seems to be in order we've got all uh, we've required everything this is a valid email this does match this password so let's go ahead and run this in the browser and see what happens and we see we get passed so if we start to just uh, you know change around some of this data i'm going to get rid of the username I'm going to go ahead and invalidate this email address and I'm going to set the password confirmed to cats123 and we'll see what errors we get out here. So you can see that we have username is required. We obviously got rid of the username value. Username must be a minimum of three. So we have a argument replacement in here. Remember we said that 
Uh, we want this to be a minimum of three and you can provide anything within the parenthesis. Email must be a valid email address. Uh, we obviously removed the domain there so it's not valid anymore. And password confirm must match password, which obviously they don't anymore. So the one thing you might be thinking is these don't look like very user-friendly error messages. So for example, this password underscore confirm must match password, you would more likely say something like your passwords do not match or something like that. So in the next video, what we're going to do is look at adding custom error messages. So you can change these for fields or rules specifically, uh, just to give you the flexibility you need to output errors. So let's jump over to the next video and tidy these up.